No, parking is like my number one thing that drives me crazy, and I think it drives you crazy too. We're going to talk about parking in Providence tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Now, my wife thinks I'm crazy uh, for all sorts of things, but uh, I, I'm, I'm really not a penny pincher in any way. I, I just not. It doesn't reflect on the amount of money I do or don't make. It's just not my habit to, to you know, pinch pennies and worry about, you know, tips and change back and all that kind of stuff. But paying for parking is it, it, it makes my head pop off, and I will drive in circles like a dog looking for a bush, seriously, to be able to find a place to park for free. And it impacts my consumer behavior, I know. And tonight we'll have a couple of business owners from Providence who probably understand that via their register and their bottom line and try to figure out what's going on with the entire City of Providence parking scheme strategy and all of that. So. That's going to be our theme this evening. As you may know, if you've been following the show for any length of time, on Fridays we skip the rundown because we pre-record the day before. Give the crew a break, you know, on a Friday. Uh, and I don't have to do two shows on a Friday. Reminder, program note, we're now afternoons 3 to 6 on WPRO. Uh, but also gives us a chance to kind of expand the conversation on one or two topics, so I'm glad to do that. Uh, and you'll meet our guests as we go, including uh, a guy who hasn't been with me in a long time. First, here's this headline on a non-parking issue because I've got to get his take on this. This was yesterday's headline in the journal. The former longtime city councilor and uh, acting mayor of the city of Providence, and now state representative for the city of Providence, is uh, John Lombardi. How are you, my friend? Good How to you? see you. Long time no see, Dan. Uh, I know we're here on the premise of parking and we want to talk about those things, but there's a couple of things that are going on in the world of the legislature and in the world of the city of Providence that I, I cannot not speak to you about. What was your take on what happened with the uh, city councilor, Mr. Jackson, who resigned yesterday as majority leader but not as councilor based on his embezzlement charges? I, I also understand he resigned from his position on the finance committee. Right, all his yeah. stuff. Yeah. He's just a sitting councilor. Uh, I, I mean, I could tell you this. I've known uh, Kevin Jackson for 30 years. I've always known him to be you know, uh, involved with children, especially in the minority community. He was involved with, the, he, he worked at the Whitmarsh School. He coached. It was a complete shock with me. Uh, you could have hit me in the head with a feather and I would have fell over. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, obviously, there's a presumption of innocence, but uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll know very shortly how severe this problem is. Do you feel, as I do, that when you get this kind of jam, that you should suspend your entire representative status and, and walk away? Well, I guess uh, that all depends. I, uh, he's, I guess what he's saying is that he's, uh, he's innocent. This is maybe a bookkeeping issue. If that's what it is, I mean, it's consistent with what happened. Well, it's consistent with what happened with his uh, finance reporting with the Board of Elections. So if that's what it is, I don't know. I think we need to see what the facts are. Okay. When you're jammed up on an allegation of $127,000 ripping off your own charity, I don't care if it, when it gets resolved, the world and the state police and the attorney general can offer the mea culpa. But unless and until then, the public trust is involved, and when you have a public position, it's probably appropriate to say, "I got to take a break." Uh, again, I think we saw it in the past with uh, you know previous people that have been uh, arrested and charged. They stood, they stuck with it right till the end, and you know maybe use it as a bargaining chip to uh, in, in in the process of uh, prosecution. Ah, always the know. lawyer you is. Sorry, Dan. Let's go to the, <laughs> let's go to the state representative side. Uh, obviously, the House Chairman. Uh, House Finance Chairman uh, Ray Gallison steps away for reasons still actually unknown. Exactly. That's so he he's jammed up. We don't know how and why. All right. Obviously, you got the poop. What is it? Oh, I don't have the poop. But <laughs> I, I tell you, what, I'll tell you what it looks like to me. It looks like uh, somebody's cooperating because uh, uh, you're exactly right. He has not been charged. Uh, there's we don't know what the allegations are. There's rumor and innuendo, and uh, again, there's a presumption of innocence. Ethics Commission legislation, though, up and agreed to by heads of state in about eight seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, the speaker would say, ah, it's been weeks and weeks and weeks, but he's done a turnaround on this. Why do you think so? Uh, well, maybe uh, it was pushed forward by the, what's happened in the past couple of weeks. He'd but, say no. Well, maybe, maybe not, but the, the bottom line is we do need an ethics uh, reform. We need to be compliant with that. We should be subject to it. Uh, I've been saying that since I first got there, and I'm so glad that it's going to happen. Maybe not in the right circumstances, but I hope it passes unanimously. All right. Uh, by the way, you a line item veto guy? Yes. Amen. You're, you're two for two. How about getting rid of the grants? Uh, yes. I think you take grants? Yes, I do. 
I take them for the small businesses, not businesses. You shouldn't sorry. take grants. Well, maybe I shouldn't, but uh, places need them, like Zucalo Recreation no. Center, food banks. There's all sorts well, of Well, there's no. $2,000 each. We'll do so a we'll separate show on that. Well, we can. We can. We can. Back <laughs> the old days. We used to brawl for hours yes, on Yes, end. we did. Yes, we did. All right. You're here for a specific <laughs> reason, though. By the way, nice job. Thank you. Um, He's never flustered. He's, he's, he's one of the easy guys to have on here because he likes the battle. Uh, can I see a series of headlines here, Jess, to just kind of reflect on what we're talking about here? Providence to add 700 parking meters around the city. What else do we have? Will Providence's parking meter expansion hurt small businesses? <clears throat> my question, my answer is how can it not? Providence backs off on plan to install parking meters on Wickenden Street. All right. And no parking meters on Hope Street. Um, we have some business owners here uh, that you'll meet in just a little bit of time, but you've been on this case, yes? Yes. Talk to me about the big picture of parking in Providence. Well, it's a lot of peace. Well, the big picture is when, when it was first uh, proposed uh, up in Federal Hill in uh, the neighborhood that I represent, the selling point for the administration was that you'll get some of this back. Uh, I don't know how that happens when the money goes into the general funds, and I think by the time you get administrative costs, repairs, uh, implementation. Uh, I, I can't see how the neighborhood or the neighborhood organization can state, okay, now we want to apply for some of those monies. And that was the selling point. It was that and the fact that some of the businesses up on Federal Hill um, had their own pockets. Well, that really doesn't affect us. I can tell you this here. If not for Mr. Adler and, and Mr. Delgarian that you'll have later, and their organization. I think they've truly created the impetus for Federal Hill now to uh, go forth. As we speak, there's a meeting with the Federal Hill Co uh, uh, Commerce Association and the mayor's office to try and reverse what they did. Look, uh, Federal Hill for, is... For everybody to know, to reverse what? To uh, remove the uh, parking meters, meters. hopefully. Uh, Federal Hills and are the meters all over at Wells? I, you know, I parked. I had I did well, had dinner there Monday night. Well, it's it's not meters there. That's the problem. It's kiosk. So you know, somebody who may have a handicap has to walk. You know, 100 feet, 400 feet to go to the kiosk. A lot of senior citizens are intimidated by those things. They're not user friendly. And right, so it's not a it's not a meter per space. It's a kiosk that's correct, down the street. Correct. And you have to pick your you have correct. to you have to program in your spot. If if you know what you're doing exactly. That's and, ridiculous. And and, and in some instances, I think on the east side, I think Thea Street, I think at, at one time, and only because I'm wearing my other hat as the municipal court judge, the kiosks were across the street, so people are looking, okay, where's the kiosk? And there is none. So you know, you just <laughs> reminded me about you, th that role. Are you still doing the municipal court? Yes. Oh, yes. Are Sorry. you are you giving people breaks, left and right, because they couldn't figure out how to do it? Well, if, sure, sure. Yeah. It all depends. I mean, you take it on a case by case basis, but uh, don't reveal my secret. <laughs> it's like if you're going to get a ticket, get to Lombardi's court. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> you, get, you get your own caught in Providence. Not really. All right. When we come back, we'll uh, be joined by some other voices on this. Stay with us. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I was just thinking, I, I, I had dinner at Siena Monday night, and I parked right in front, but I'm looking at the thing until 9 p.m., and I'm thinking, where do I put the, uh, whatever. I, so if I got jammed up, you know what court I'm going to? Lombardi's, that's for sure. Oh, my goodness. All right, on the issue of parking uh, in totality, uh, Tim White put this together for us. Failing to feed the meter could result in getting one of these, a ticket for $25, and we found a private company gets a cut on each one of these citations. A bright orange ticket sticking out from a windshield wiper can make the heart sink for both drivers and shop owners. And the meters to us seem like one more battle that we're going to have to fight to get customers to come and spend their money with us. City records show every time you pay a ticket, $1.70 goes to company Xerox ACS. They supply the equipment used by parking enforcement to issue tickets. It's the same company that conducted a study on where the city would get the most bang for their buck as part of a parking meter expansion plan. Parking meter is just one more obstacle and one more tax on the consumer. Dixie Carroll is co-president of the Hope Street Merchants Association and one of the owners of Eastside Shop, Jay Marcel. She says the city should use a company to collect data that doesn't have skin in the game. Where would there ever be a situation where it would benefit Xerox to not recommend installing parking meters? 
<coughs> they don't make the recommendation. That's the bottom line. But they give you the data for the recommendation. They give the data, and that's all they do. And everything is done in our office. Leo Parada is the city's parking administrator. He says the city was planning to expand the number of parking meters before the study was done. Records show Xerox took in $266,000 from parking meter violations so far this year. Parada says the overall trend of tickets are actually on the decline. We look at occupancy rates, and it's not tickets, it's occupancy, it's turnover that we're looking at. And we want to promote turnover in area and not give out tickets. That's the bottom line. As part of the expansion project, 330 meters have been added this year so far, including on South Main Street and at Wells Avenue. Meters are strongly being considered for insulation on Wickedon Street. Parada tells me the Xerox study actually helped merchants on Hope Street. He says the city recently decided not to put meters outside their shops. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News. Uh, the state representative is uh, shaking his head over that one, yes? Mm, yes, I am. Well, <laughs> hold on a second on that. Uh, meet uh, Ken Dolgarian, who owns uh, Avon Cinemas and is a real estate developer. Ken, welcome. Thank you. You're an advocate for a position here. I want to find out what that is in a second, but why are you shaking your head over the last well, uh, it, it, report there from Tim? It, 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 well, not about the report, about what Mr. Parada said. I mean, it, it's a non sequitur. I mean, how could one thing be one thing and then be something else? I mean, I, I'm just confused. And that's that's how he promotes it. That's how we try to promote it in our neighborhood. Look, the more, the more tickets we issue, the more money we get, the more you're going to get. Well, it, but it's impossible. It violates ordinances in the city of Providence. It has to go into the general fund. It's never going to come back to the neighborhood. There are no dedicated revenue streams, is what you're saying. Th that's correct. All right. Ken, what's your position on all this? Well, we, um, the, the administration put meters in and kiosk boxes uh, about six months ago. And uh, our uh, family assets, uh, institutions like the Avon and real estate holdings on that street, they decimated in six months what we've built in 75 years. What's decimate mean? Well, there's six to a dozen empty stores. We've all had empty stores as vacancies as landlords, but we filled them right away. Not, not, not anymore. Uh, you got kiosks that nobody knows how to use them. Uh, it's nice for Palm Beach. Elderly people, they have nothing to do. They can take their time, figure it out. It's snowing, it's raining nine months, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the things are so tall, the old people can't even see up and put the card in six directions. So traffic has decimated uh, considerably. Businesses are off 40%. 40%? Uh, oh, yes, and I'll tell you another one. Uh, I own Santander Bank, Starbucks, Verizon left. I lowered the rent. And he calls his accountant. He was losing like national debt, third world country. Incredible. He said, I can't, I can't do it. He says, I'm out. So there's more to fall. That's why this thing, it, it's an experiment. It did not work. Uh, you know, you got to admit you made a mistake and then you can move on. And this is a mistake. The, this, the, this did Jen, do you remember what the total revenue projection is for the city of Providence for parking meters in general? Uh, well, it was, uh, I think they said 2.1, and this was an added 2.6. Yeah. So. I, I've always <laughs> asked this question. Look, I understand that parking is a premium. And I understand that parking has got to be regulated. And part of the arguments for parking is that it regulates customer behavior it, 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 or, or driver behavior, it prevents people from, from squatting. You know, in a sp in a place, and I guess in some neighborhoods that that, that might be an appropriate conversation, but maybe not on no. yours. This is a destination place, so if somebody wants to right, go I'm out going. to eat, I'm going to go to the movie. I'm going to go to the store. Andre is and have a right. dinner, and sure. you watch a two-hour movie with me. You don't yeah. keep on looking at the watch. Uh, you tell your wife, I got to go and feed the meter. Right. Doesn't work. They're going to go somewhere else. Or feed the kiosk. Yeah, or that feed you the can't kiosk figure out. You can't figure it out. Yeah. That only the old ladies in Fort Lauderdale yeah. would be able to. And figure this it out. Uh, this revenue stream that we're talking about. Let me tell you, if they did a forensic audit. It, not citywide, just take my Thayer Street, and they did a forensic audit. What does it take in? What is the, like John said, what is the overhead, leasing, maintenance, payroll, and what is the net, uh, net, OI, net on income, NOI? Not the gross. The hell, you're going to be General Motors and they're losing billions of dollars. No. What, not the gross. What's the net? Now, uh, last thing, I, I just thought, the tangible tax, Dan, you have an empty store. I'm the city. I can't collect on a tangible tax. That's mm. lost. That goes on this side of the ledger. Right. I'm a landlord. I can't get the rents. I lower the rents. I go back to the assessor. Hey, I need to have a lower assessment. 
So uh, just, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to we're, we're meet Harry Adler, who owns uh, Adler's Hardware as well, coming up in the next segment. I'm sure he's going to be as uh, clear and, and animated as you are in this. But as I listen to Ken, and you're a former counselor, mayor, guys like this come in and make so much common sense. Mm. What? Well, Dean, first of all, if I were the mayor, the meters would have been uh, instituted Understood. and installed. By the way, does, so, it, does it take a rocket scientist to figure out no. you make it more difficult for people to do business, businesses lost, that hurts the big picture and the economy in general? Is that We had it 30 yeah. years ago, Dean, and we pulled them out. And everything got better. Oh, much better. Yeah. Central Falls is a great example. You ask Mayor Dios, once they pull the parking meter, we were talking about it earlier, once you pull out the parking meter, Business, every, every Renaissance. Unbelievable. Well, Dan, his, his so you make it up somewhere in, in other places. The sure. economy, it's almost like a reverse or trickle down. Or, or it's a suppressive, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a suppressive short money strategy. Is mm -hmm. it not? That sure. strangles tenants, landlords. You've got to expand the tax base. That's thinking out of the box. Right. Go to Allen's Avenue. Your final thought, because I want to bring in another business owner. Uh, I, I hope that today they resolve the issue with the administration that the pocket meters must go immediately, if not sooner. All right. When we come back, we'll meet another business owner on the issue. I mean, I think you get the point. You're the one spending the money. Right back. All right, so there is the online petition to, uh, you know, make a statement about parking in the city of Providence. And uh, we continue with Ken Delgarian, who's a real estate developer, uh, owns Avon Cinemas, and has a lot of property. I think you could tell by the last segment. If you missed any of this conversation, don't. Go to Providence, uh, foxprovidence.com and, 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 um, and, and recapture the argument. Harry Adler owns Adler's Hardware, which is a standalone hardware paint at all type of place, right? Correct old-fashioned model. There aren't many standalone hardware stores around anymore. Yeah, that, we're one of the few. And business has been good over history, Yeah, obviously, yeah, or yeah. you wouldn't be sticking around. Yeah, you, we, we don't, we're not subsidized, so no, we have to earn what we, uh, what we make. So. And are you two finding difficulty? Remind everybody what street Hedler's hardware is on. We're on Wickedon Street. You're on Wickedon. Um, what's your issue? Well, our issue was the city coming to us with a plan to help us, which was in the form of p parking meters. And they were meeting with us to tell us of the wonders that parking meters would bring to our businesses, which we were dumbfounded by because we don't have a problem with parking. So it seemed like a real red herring to be talking about the benefits of parking meter and turnover but back to where we started was our customers don't have any trouble getting a parking space for free near our stores. So it's never a great idea to fix something that's not broken. But to present it as helping our businesses, it's another tax. That's what the issue was. But as Ken so eloquently put it, it's on the backs of us. And it will I'm sure that it'll hurt the city. It has to hurt the city. Vacancies, lowered revenues, it, it will be a negative. Um, so we fought like hell. We got online petitions going. We got our customers calling the mayor's office. And you thwarted the east side. So right far. Now. So, so far. far. It's, yeah. a, it's a pushback. In fact, we've got some language from, from some of the respondents, the petitions and everything else. Just if you want to put some of that stuff up, um, depending on how big your screen is, you can help read. As a member of the Brown community and uh, Thayer, uh, prohibitive, says Deborah, you know, shopping, dining, campus programs. Another one, Sandra, bud budget shouldn't be balanced at the expense of small business and their patrons. Uh, we want to be able to go out, you know, as, as Ken was saying, you know, you don't want to be watching your watch when you're watching the movie. I mean, all these things make perfect sense. Now, look, to play devil's advocate for a second, very di difficult for me to do because I'm completely with you guys. And frankly, I don't buy Mayor Lourdes' act. He knows it. I know it. We all know it. He won't come here ever since the election to actually answer questions, which are you know easy. Maybe, maybe there's a brilliance that he has that I don't get. Um, hold on here, John. Yeah, that was John Lombardi sticking his head in the camera. He's always doing something to upset the apple cart. Lombardi, just sit there or you're going to get fined in your own court. Um, anyway, uh, that's a first, by the way. Congratulations. The, 
the argument I'm sure the mayor would be is look, the financial pressure of the city is excruciating. It's pre bankruptcy, what do you want? And your response would be Well, you gotta look at the other side of the ledger. If stores are emptying out and there's vacancies and you're losing property taxes it could and tangible faster. taxes, yeah. It's a spiral. You, what you have to do is you have to expand the tax base. Look at other parts of the city that have not been developed. Bring in developers like in Allen's Avenue with the waterfront and condos and boats and slips and things of that nature. You have to have a broad-minded. But, but this is microscopic, and it's damaging. It's damaging. And the proof in the pudding is look at what happened. Look at what's happened to Thayer Street. That was an iconic destination place where people went shopping with their daughters and they bought her a dress and they went out to eat and ice cream and coffee and something to eat and see a matinee. And they can now go to Garden City or they go to the big box, uh, you know, and because it's parking. So they destroyed the history. Thayer, and try bringing how long back. have the meters been now? Six months or so. Yeah, listen, I, I, I love Thayer Street. Uh, my wife and I, my daughter, we go down um, a handful of times a year. Let's not kid ourselves. Without the meters, it's a it's a little bit of a sport. Mm -hmm. Getting yes. parking is still a little bit of a sport. But yes. okay, so it wasn't carefree. Right. Have the meters affected the sport? Oh, dramatically. Well, I mean, is it, it might be easier to get a parking space if business is down forty percent. Right. I mean, that's not the way you want to regulate the right. the right. ease of it. But it's always been kind of a tussle. It's kind yeah. of the it's the it's the beauty of going down there. Yeah. You got to give yourself an extra 10, yeah. 15 minutes to yeah. find a spot, yeah. right? It was an experiment. That didn't work. It was an experiment. But you're not. I reflect on in the old days, six months and back. Yeah. Parking is still a little oh, bit of, of a course. thing. But there was it was bustling. I mean, people were doing business. People would, people would they bustle. They were overflowing. They could they, pay because they didn't have to park. They could cover pay overhead. Park. They could cover. The, well, one of the highest fifth national in the country for property taxes. We could afford to. And pay we also the have an equity bills. issue here, right? Yeah. Some neighborhoods yes, some neighborhoods no. Yeah. I mean, you're happy that you're fighting it. Yeah, and I, I don't, I'm a customer. I don't want to be paying to park in Wayland Square and on Thayer Street and on Federal Hill. I, I, I would work as hard as I did for working the street for these other neighborhoods because, you know, if there's a neighborhood like downtown Providence, yeah, they need meters. That's a different si situation. But you drive into Wayland Square and you look at how many meters are empty right now, no cars there. Those businesses have to be hurting. Suffering. Yeah. They have to be. It, it's just counterintuitive to present this as a way of developing business. And what we're going to find out with some drop in revenues via taxes and all that kind of stuff, I mean the regular flow of taxes, when, these, when, when, when what you're saying you're seeing and feeling yourself and yeah. what you're seeing and feeling yourself manifests itself on the budget. Mm -hmm. yep. And all of a sudden it's we going have, to be penny wise have, and pound foolish. We have correct? 80 merchants that signed a petition, 80 merchants on Bay Street. Then we went public just a few days ago, Dan, and we're up to 2,400, 2,400 signed petition online. Right, so you know what we're going to do? I'd, I'd like to have you back here on the show to, to kind of debate those who think this is a good idea, if I can find them, including the mayor's administration. Sometimes they kind of hide on this. So the bottom line on this is? Get rid of the meters so we can flourish. Keep them off. I'm, I'm, I'm with Ken. I'm totally with Ken. I'm, I'm really grateful they're not in front of my, my store. We would do yeah. less business today if they were there. Got it. We'll come back for final thoughts. There was, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to the fellas. Who could we bring on here? Who could Lexi contact to actually come here and argue that the meter strategy is a good one? If you know, let us know uh, via foxprovidence.com. I know the mayor might think it's a good one, but he doesn't seem to want to publicly defend it. And uh, so APB. Any gutsy people out there? We'll treat you nice. Lombardi will be nice. He promises. You have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.